here is supposed to be a farm that will be about 13,000 hectares of land. The technical details will be given by Chief James Awoniyi, who represents the Honorable Minister on this project. This is the part of Kazava Transformation Agenda, and I've said is a marriage between Kogi State and the federal government. In short, without letting the cat out of the uh, and food sweetener. Already the half tickers have already have taken the production. I know you have constraint of time. I will not bore you much, but to allow the representatives of the minister on this project to really give you the actual acreage of land covered the expanse of the land and private investors like Kagil and some Brazilian farmers. The, the visiting team, with no doubt in my mind and without any reservation, I say you are welcome to the first that I am pioneering this particular project on behalf of the federal government my minister, Dr. Akin Wumi Adishina, and the only governor that we can wake up at any time from Abuja and said, we want this for agriculture, and he will pick his own, and within 24 hours, he will get it done. Ladies and gentlemen, where you are today, two months ago, was a forest. What you see here today, it's an evidence that Nigeria can be turned around by Nigerians. What you are looking at here today is all mechanized. No single hole or cutlass worked here. And this is the cornerstone of Mr. President's Agri Transformation Agenda, the Staple Crop Processing Zone, whereby Production and processing are brought together in the same location. Processing has been the bane of agriculture in this country. That is why we have not been able to break the poverty circle within the society and in the rural area in particular. On this particular processing zone, the government role, federal, is to facilitate all that is needed to encourage private investors to come and invest in this place, to process all that will be produced here. By the way, we have two cassava processing zones in the whole country, one here and one in Ogun State. And because of Mr. President and the Governor of Kogi State's active involvement, the largest processing food company in the whole world, Kagel, is the anchor investor in this place. If you had been here last week, you would have seen them. Again, Kagel is 150 years old and is active in 75 countries. And this is the first time they will be investing in Nigeria. And Kogi is a uh, destination of choice. The farm will be 15,000 hectares to start with. And I said to start with. And it's going to be co composed of three rings of farmers. The first ring will be young people, graduates, who will be commercial small-scale farmers. They will start as commercial small-scale farmer. Why small? Because they are yet to have the necessary experience. And on this field today, already 50 youths 
have been given to us by Kogi State Government, supported to participate right where you are now. And we uh, plan that 20% of the 15,000 hectares will be allocated to these youths. And to this effect, the World Bank through FADAMA is supporting this particular project and has approved additional funding for FADAMA to enable them to support small-scale commercial farmers in Kogi State to the tune of 5,000 hectares. The second layer of farmers will be medium-scale farmers. People like you gentlemen who are busy making money in Abuja and elsewhere that we will be encouraging to come and set up farms here. You will be welcome. The environment will be conducive. Market will be there before you even plant the first stem of cassava. And we assure you of the highest support in terms of government and business environment support. The third group will be what we call large-scale commercial farmers. Large-scale, because for a company that will be using over 1,000 tons of cassava roots every single day, it cannot allow its supply chain to be broken for five minutes. And so, they must have a plan that will enable them to break even within their own control. As a young man in the early 80s, I looked into the southwest in particular and the industrialization situation. And when SAP came in, and why they failed. Over 80% of the cost of failure was based on the companies not directly in control and command of their raw materials. That lesson we are learning here. Again, a fundamental uh, problem of how land is acquired for government or even big projects is done, is being revolutionized here. Because we, when we said we want people to invest, we want them to have the peace of today and the peace of tomorrow. Instead of young people growing up to destroy, we want them to grow up to use their lives to defend those projects because their livelihood is tight. To those projects and to this effect we can see some uh, a white face over there and uh, some other people we have been supported by g8 in terms of our land, land tenor system acquiring this land in this place the standard is being followed at the international level and we have been supervised and supported by the whole of g8 on this and I want to praise Governor Idris Wada because this is the only place is taking place, such is happening in the whole of the country. Here, first and foremost, the break-even of the processor. But with the proviso that the medium-scale farmers who are Nigerians, we understudy the large-scale farmer. At the point, the large-scale farmer will have to exit. When the medium scale farmer moves up, of course, the small scale who has, who succeeds, we move into the stay into the shoes of the medium scale. And with this, we believe that the idea of saying we can feed ourselves is no longer a theory. It's already in practice here in Kogi State. And I believe Dr. Akin Wume Adeshina is proving to Nigerians that he is not just speaking English, but he is practicalizing everything he's saying. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Here, yeah. the governor of Kogi State, Captain Idris Wada, have been proactive, and so we have 
adequate security coverage. We toss here is the DPO. Please raise your hand so that people can see you for Kababuno. And you know what can bring a DPO to the farm. You know there is adequate security. And as we go on, you'll find the checkpoints. As for the roads, uh, the road is being fixed, and I'm sure the rain now stops. The fixing process will be is, is uh, has been the bidding process has gone, and the road will be fixed anytime from now till the end of the year. Now to the first question. The first question: These routes are the TNE four one nine from the IITA. So they are the latest improved breeds apart from the Vitamin A cassava, and the you, the the Kagel has discovered that this will be the best in terms of starch production. Uh, the Kagel have discovered that this will be the best in terms of starch production and the food sweetener for them. Then I think uh, the other one about the source of water. Oh God, <clears throat> we are having a massive infrastructural development here. There is a, a dam very close. And at the center of this stable processing, processing zone is a fast flowing stream which can be done. Okay, as to the processing zone, the processing zone will not be in the community. An area has been demarcated in which the farm manager has been appointed. I think the general manager for the factory will be resuming anytime in the month of November and is in the heart of the heart of the farm. And finally, the other questions about power or about power. We already the PXN before it was defuncted has given us the bill of quantity for picking power here. And just like he has told you, the FIFID has intervened. The World Bank is developing infrastructures. African Development Bank is struggling to come in also. So many other developmental supportive agencies are quite interested in this staple crop processing zone. In their world, they said our governor Captain Idris Wada has gone beyond words and papers as put in action. And this is the first staple crop processing zone we could not afford to make it a failure. So we have to make a success of it. Uh, a mark between Okebuko and Kaba to service this particular area. And uh, water, like he said, we have, you know, here, I'm a farmer, a practical farmer. And uh, when I talk to you, I talk to you with somebody with a practical background in, in agriculture. By training and, and finance, and I'm sure the, uh, the, the, brevity of, uh, the brevity of the questions uh, should be an indication that uh, perhaps we are all satisfied. I, I wanted to address very briefly the question of uh, security raised by the gentleman who publishes Kugi Affairs. Last year, we were in Kwara, and we visited Shonga Farms. On that occasion, I mean, remember, we left that place deep into the night. We didn't see any DPO on site on any of the farmlands. And sometimes, this is my opinion, I think that the way we elevate some of our negatives, as if those negatives are the drivers of our social life or of our economic life, who create the impression that nothing else is possible in our environment. Shonga Farms in Kwara is a huge farm. And those of us who have been on the Good Governance Store, when we were there last year, you can attest to that. And I don't know whether any of you saw uh, Bolaji uh, Adebe, the Special Assistant to Mr. President, is nodding his head. Whether any of us saw any policeman, you know, on the beat while we were going there. And uh, to the extent that there is a proposal to engage the youth on this particular project, it appears to me that those of their uh, mates who might be otherwise minded uh, to go for uh, a fast kill would not know that in fact there is dignity in labor and that you can actually till the earth and then end your reward rather than facing the life of a mosquito so you get squashed in a matter of days or in a matter of weeks. That's one point. The second point, Honorable Commissioner, we, we have seen this. The explanation is clear. What we are seeing here, two things, basically. The agricultural transformation agenda of the federal government under President Goodluck Jonathan and the cooperative attitude of the Kogi State government under Captain Idris Wada. We have seen a number of examples of this. The first that we saw, and I mentioned that while we were on the, on the road yesterday, that Kogi 
is unabashed in adopting the agricultural transformation agenda as its own slogan. And there is no point seeking to reinvent the wheel or try to be creative and you create your own nomenclature. It is the substance that matters. Uh, the other point to which I find, uh, which is uh, uncomfortable with me, is as follows. When we say a processing zone, the presumption is that you have a plant, a processing plant ready. Unless those plants have been, uh, the components have been shipped in and then you are seeking to assemble, fair enough, you've been describing somewhere there, it's somewhere there. But I've been helpful, we are, we, we are short of time now, for us to see where the processing will take place. I do not imagine, I'm sorry, my Greek fails me at this stage, I'm not quite sure for how long the uh, cassava plant will grow. Uh, fine, if it is harvested in, ten months, in eight months' time, because it's two months already, where will it be processed? So that's, uh, that's uh, I'm not sure where that's the, uh, uh, fantastic, that's, that's a good one. Uh -huh. No, wait a minute, I agree they have off takers, but where will it be processed? Are they going to take it raw and process it outside of our shores or it will be processed here? Definitely, going forward, going forward, we will see here the true realization of value addition. That is a critical component of the agricultural transformation agenda. You recall yesterday we were at the Kogi State Polytechnic and we addressed the students and told them there is hope in this country. If you do not want to work on the farm, look at the other aspects along the value chain. It is your business. You can say, look, all I want to do is to be a transporter. All I want to do is to seek to produce cartons. All I want to seek to do is to say, look, no problem. Whenever they produce the chips, I will take them to a piggery and then dump them there. So the message to our youth is that, in my opinion, is that at all times, while we are speaking to ourselves, we continue to point out to them the many opportunities that are unfolding before our eyes. And we must seize on these opportunities. SAP was a disastrously implemented policy from 1986. It led to brain drain in this country. The first mishap with SAP was that it led to a devaluation of the Naira at a time when we were not really a producing economy. We were still re relying heavily on petroleum proceeds. Petroleum is produced here in the first instance. And you sell on the international market and you earn dollars. In the meantime, you are devaluing your own currency. It is when you are producing for export and you say, listen, you want your products to be competitive and you want to earn more forex, that you devalue your currency. Yes. In any event, those economics are gone with the past. What we are dealing with now is the transformation agenda. And going forward, we do hope that many Nigerians out there, the youth particularly, those who are looking for jobs and those who are looking for business opportunities, will realize that there is wealth in this land. I thank you very much. Thank you.